welcome students so my name is prem kumar so today we are going to discuss atomic absorption spectroscopy so this lecture uh, includes the following contents introduction principle instrumentation application and some of uh, experimental conditions yeah. coming to introduction so atomic absorption spectroscopy simply we can call as aas is a very common technique for uh, detecting metals and metalloids in samples it is a very reliable and simple to use so mostly around 62 elements are going to be analyzed by using atomic absorption spectroscopy along with uh, uh, determination of elements it also measures the concentration of metals in the given sample either unknown or known samples so this is the uh, first instrument of atomic absorption so we can call it as atomic absorption spectrometer was built by csi arbo scientist alan walsh in 1954 the following picture shows the instrument along with the alan walsh so coming to principle of AS, the technique uses basically the principle that free atoms, majorly gases, generated in an atomizer can be absorbed by radiation at specific frequency. AAS quantifies the absorption of ground state atoms in the gaseous state. The atoms absorbs ultraviolet or visible light and make transition to higher electronic energy levels. So when the atoms are in ground state, so that should be converts initially into gaseous state. That gaseous state absorb, uh, atoms are absorbs UV or visible light to make transition. As we discussed in the UV spectroscopy, the UV light or visible light, when these light passes through the sample, the electrons of that sample is going to be excited. That excited mechanism is known as transitions. The analyte concentration is determined from the amount of absorption. The concentration measurements are usually determined from a working curve after calibrating the instrument with the standards of known concentration. So this is uh, known as calibration curve method. So in this calibration curve method, uh, we should compare the test sample with known standard. Atomic absorption is a very common technique for detecting metals and metalloids in environmental samples. So coming to instrumentation. So uh, the following diagram is uh, schematic diagram of AS. So in this diagram contains uh, one halo cathode lamp and which uh, flame, nebulizers, monochromator, detectors and test solution. So coming to the first one uh, light source. So I mentioned in the diagram halo cathode lamp. It is the most common radiation source in atomic absorption spectroscopy. It contains a tungsten anode and a halo cylindrical cathode made up of the element to be determined. So the arrangement of the construction of light source should be depends on the metal which we are going to be determined. These are sealed in a glass tube filled with an inert gas. So mostly neon or argon as preferable. Each element has its own unique lamp which must be used for that analysis. So as I mentioned in the second point, so the cathode uh, should be made up of the element which we are going to be determined. So this is the construction of halo cathode lamp. 
This lamp consists a quartz window, the pyrexy body, anode and cathode. So here I mean uh, I given separate diagram of cathode. So an internal arrangement of cathode. So that cathode is made up of the element which we are going to be analyzed. The second one of instrumentation is nebulizers. So I mentioned in the diagram flame. So that flame is developed by nebulizers. So nebulizer is a device that introduces a liquid sample into the atomic absorption spectroscopy. So without nebulizer, we cannot get the sample introdu introduction into the equipment. So here I mentioned two types of nebulizers. So one is pneumatic nebulizer and second one is ultrasonic nebulizers. So this pneumatic nebulizer converts a sample solution into aerosol of tiny droplets is using a jet of compressed gas. The flow of inert gas carries the droplets to an atomizer. Several versions of uh, pneumatic nebulizers are available. So here I mentioned three basic types of nebulizers comes under pneumatic nebulizer category. So one is concentric tube nebulizer the cross flow nebulizer, Babington nebulizers. So these uh, nebulizers uh, which spray the aerosol solution, so that aeros aerosol solution should be formed by using sample solution. And this uh, aerosols should be transferred to the flame to give proper spectros. Then second one is an ultrasonic nebulizer. So this is the construction. So it, it consists of different parts. So it creates an aerosol of tiny droplets by pumping of a sample solution into the surface of piezoelectrical crystals. That vibrates at a frequency of 20 kilohertz to several megahertz. So just go through the picture. So here the pyro piezoelectric transducer here mentioned here. Okay. So here the droplets are developed, and these droplets are traveled through. So this arrangement to give uh, proper vapor conditions, and from here the vapor should be uh, having outlet. The vibrations converts the sample into the dense and a more homogeneous aerosols than that a pneumatic nebulizers can achieve. However, uh, viscous liquids and particles lower its efficiency. The aerosol is then carried to an atomizer by an inert gas. So always we use uh, inert gas as a carrier gas. The th second one. Okay, as I mentioned in the last slide, the aerosol should be carried to atomizers. So here we have atomizers, it is a, uh, one of the basic part of the equipment. The atomization is a separation of particles into individuals, molecules and breaking of molecules into atoms. This is done by exp exposing the analyte to high temperatures in a flame or a graphite furnace. The sample first it reaches nebulizers. In the nebulizer it converts uh, into vapor state. That vapors are transfer uh, travel to atomizers, and these atomizers uh, in that atomizer the flame should be uh, uh, happen. In that flame, this analytes may be excited. So here we have two types of atomizers. One is flame atomizers and graphite tube atomizers. So here I mentioned a flame atomizers. So it mainly used to create a flame 
so we need to mix an oxygen gas and a fuel gas in most of the cases air acetylene flame or nitrous oxide acetylene flame is used sometimes liquid or dissolved samples are also used with the flame atomizers so here the light source means here halo cathode lamp so this is the way of light so here sample it should vaporized and then move to the atomic cell so where it produce fluor okay where it produce gas uh, flame so from uh, through the flame the light should be passed so in the flame we have the excited sample cell so that should be traveled to detectors so this is a graphite atomizer so just go through the diagram so here we have sample inlet so from this uh, the sample should be inserted so here we have two outlets inlets gas inlet and water inlet okay so this is the the green color uh, arrow should give the the light path and here at the down of light path we have graphite tube okay so and also we have metal a jacket so it mainly uses a graphite coated furnace to vaporize the sample in graphite tube atomizer samples samples are deposited in a small graphite coated tube which can then be heated to vaporize and atomize the light the graphite tubes are heated using the high current power supply and then uh, one of the important part that is monochromator so this is a very important part in atomic absorption spectro of meter it is used to separate out all of the thousands of lights just to go through the diagram so heat majorly the monochromator uses to converts so polychromatic light into the monochromatic so polychromatic lights having thousands of lines so that should be separated into a single line so which we require a monochromator is used to select the specific wavelength of a light which absorbed by the sample and to exclude the other wavelengths so it should absorbs the light which we require and it will transmit the light which we don't require the selection of the specific light allows the determination of the selected element in the presence of others then detectors so the light selected by the monochromat is directed onto the detectors that is typically a photomultiplier tube the whose function is to convert the light signal into an electrical signal proportional to the light intensity so here in photomultiplier tube so we have a uh, different dynodes okay these dynodes catches the light from the photocathode so here in this dynodes the light should be multiplied multiplied and then reaches to the anode so this the processing of electric signal is fulfilled by a single amplifier the signal could be displayed for read out or further fed into a data station for print out by the requested format so coming to applications of atomic absorption spectroscopy photometer so here the determination of even a small amount of metals like lead mercury calcium magnesium etc as follows here uh, this uh, determination should be done for environment studies majorly drinking water ocean water and soil water to be tested for the presence of metals So which which uh, which we don't require, and also it it may be used in food industry for the uh, determination of uh, small amounts of metals, and also used in the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you. Or oh, this is for today. Thank you. In the next class, we are going to discuss 
the floor metry in that principle and theory so we'll discuss thank you